Welcome back. Uh, let's play some Blitz. I'm sorry, there's actually a 960 Shield Arena. We'll play a game of Blitz to warm up. Um, maybe even put the 3D pieces back on and then get started with the main stuff that we're used to doing here. Because 960 Shield Arena sounds kind of fun, eh? Uh, D5? Nice. Okay, so because of this, we're going to retreat the knight back this way instead. Uh, my opponent plays the bayonet attack. I'm not terribly familiar um, with this variation. I'm a bit confused by what's going on here. Usually, my mere threat of doing this is enough to spook my opponent. Um, but this opponent is not so easily spooked. So how do I proceed? Well, one, this is actually disturbing me, so I'm going to turn on the 3D pieces. Sorry. I know some people are not fans of these pieces, but I don't know. Something about it is most pleasant to me. Uh, let me also increase the board dimension ever so slightly. And as long as that doesn't mess up the capture, we're still good. Uh, yeah, we can, I can still see my board, so we're going to continue. I'm not totally sure how to proceed here. So G5 might be pushing it. I don't know. So now my opponent's committed to knight c4. Maybe now I push f4. Maybe now I take on e4. I really don't know. There's a lot of ways I could play this, I guess. It feels like f4 is the thematic move, so therefore I should do it. Although... I'm not entirely sure. Okay. So this is all leading up to some sort of activity on... Well, we'll see it when it happens. Um, Yeah, let's bring the knight forward. Oh, yeah. Uh, the reason it's for adults is because um, some of the audience here are adults. And I can't really control how people behave in the channel. I try, but it's a task beyond what I'm able of completely controlling. So rather than trying to shut down speech here, I'm going to uh, just take the stance that sometimes people will say bad things. I'll probably eventually mute them, but um, yeah. It's not because I intend to put any kind of adult content on here. Um, it's just that moderation is challenging. All right, that's got to be mistaken, right? a nice bishop. It'd be a pity if something were to happen to it. All right. We'll just take this square and see where this goes. <laughs> Dead Sea Moss Battery. That's a good name. Wish I'd had something so clever. Uh. <laughs> okay, so this is bad. This could be worse, but this is pretty bad. Um, also, the my time situation is not so great. 
so yeah. I'm not really sure where this is going. I guess if I get my rook to g6, maybe I have some activity. Um, we'll find out. There's my grand plan. Two minutes later, finally push g4. Phase two will be sacking something on the king's side and hoping that things work. But um, phase one's done. Got our pieces in place to start attacking. I get the sense that this could have gone better. Um, sure, why not? What's the worst that could happen? I can't lose all my pieces twice. <laughs> all right, let's put the knight over here, aiming for d4. He's not even taking my bishop. Huh, interesting. I don't understand what's going on here. Oh, that's check, isn't it? All right. Well, that was interesting. Um, let's take one of those. Well, we've almost got it, maybe. Certainly some tense moments this game. Okay, well, that was an adventure. <laughs> that was one heck of an adventure. Oh my goodness. Wait, did I bookmark this? I meant to bookmark it. All right, let the engine figure out what happened that game. Because I'm not totally sure. Things happen when you play the King's Indian. Things just happen. I'm kind of surprised he didn't take my bishop. I was so surprised, I was so confident he was going to spend a tempo to take it, because it seems like I don't really have an attack here. I was feigning as if I did, and pretending like I'd play g2 and, I don't know, queen g5, queen g3. I, But my attack prevailed, so yeah. When did that happen? g4. Best move was bishop f8. Interesting. Now I'm already down a piece here, so perhaps that's not where the analysis should start, but back here. a5. Okay, I was not sure about what to do. This, I think, is where I switched to using a 3D set, and it actually didn't help me figure this out either. Oh, where did... How do I get this dark theme? Um... So Lee Chess does have a built-in dark theme, but some further coloring to the theme. Oops. My bot is offline. Well, that's cool. Um, 
Well, when the bot comes back online, you can type that command and it will inform you where you can find this style at. Um, so let's try to get the bot back online. Pretty please, will the bot come online? And if it does, does this command work again? Nah. It appears I have some technical issues there. Um, but you can find the user style for terminal leeches on userstyles.org. Um, wait, where did the shield thing go? Has it concluded already? Did I miss it? Where's... here's the shield arena. Let's let's play our chess 960 shield game. Before it's too late. We're going to win the entire tournament in one game here. We're going to defeat this uh, chess master or candidate master as well as another streamer. We're just going to defeat them all. How hard can it be? That's pretty cool that the defending champion is also streaming their games. <laughs> and that they're a CM. Um, so I'll have to learn a little bit more about that um, bayonet attack with the early C5. I guess if they play an early C5, B4 there, then I should throw in A5 as it seems to disrupt the A6 push. 21 seconds to make a first move. There we go. Yeah. I know a lot of people in Chess 960... Well, that's interesting. Um, they like to play first moves which um, expose the bishops on the long diagonals. That probably would have been wise. Um, I'm just trying something a bit more ambitious rather than prudent. So, yes, I will want to push d4 at some point. And to have pushed d4, I would have needed to push uh, b3 at some point. Um, so already I'm kind of very confused. Um, I like a queenside castle with queen a3. Okay, my opponent wins a free pawn that gives me this really fun bishop. I'll take it. I will so take this. This looks too fun to pass up. So I expose my queen on the long diagonal here. Got my bishop going there. Could be fun um, if I just play knight f5. Oh, my opponent could castle. But that doesn't end the problem. That's interesting. My thoughts on anti-cheating. Is it possible to improve on what's already used? Um, it depends. Uh, with software, anything is possible. Except for the domain of problems which computers cannot solve. Uh, such as the halting problem. That one is actually kind of a hard problem. But almost everything has some sort of solution. Whether or not the solution is fully satisfactory to everybody is another matter, but... Um, yeah, no, certainly it's possible to improve, but that's probably not your question. All right, let's get the queen out of the corner. Um, so I tend to like starting with the center pawn. We're going to start with this center pawn. Okay. Oh, do I just play bishop d6 here? Does that make some sense? I think it does. Because I'm not aiming to get my bishop on the other diagonal, so this one will do just fine. Um, hmm, developing this bishop could get awkward, though. 
because I like to develop knights before bishops, but the bishop on e8 looks challenged. Also that. So my opponent kind of helps me out. Um, let me guess, d4? Also, I should have just checked on a3 already. When am I going to do that? So there's d4 uh, right on schedule. So my plan was knight f7. Um, I'm going to go off. No, I'm sorry. That doesn't actually get me anything. We're going to do knight f7 just as planned. And there our knight has made it to the center. And here this knight has made it. So now we can start developing bishops having developed our knights already. Um, so, shall we castle? Castling looks fun. Um, let's throw one move in first to get the queen out. So now my queen is radiating its effect on this diagonal. Now this knight is defended twice, so I shouldn't be too optimistic about that, but um, yeah. Do I just play the queen there directly? Doesn't look so bad. Yeah, this looks fun. Let's do it. Um, yeah, by all means, if you have more questions, I know there's only so much I can really, I don't know, talk about with that, because I've only seen the code. I've never seen any of the data, so I can only speculate. Um how it actually performs with real data in terms of the anti-cheating system. But um, I've seen the code so I can try to answer some of the questions in very generic terms, but there's really not a whole lot I can answer with that. That said, I, I do find it impressive. I do think Lee Chess is putting in a very good effort and I assume they're having very good results with it, um, with the detection and such. All right, let's castle. <laughs> Gets them every time. All right, so I'm afraid of queen d2, but really, so my point of castling was so I could get the rook over here so I could hit the e pawn try to discourage queen d2 on account of it's now losing the pawn. They'll probably play queen d2 anyway, but now I can uh, respond by just taking here instead of directly exchanging queens. So that gave me some more tactical options having developed my pieces. All right, we got an amusing anecdote. A uh, person regularly cheats, and the system doesn't work. Like I said, I don't know. <laughs> like, that's cool. Not a question, but it's still fun. I mean, like, if you expected me to balk at that and say, like, oh, I am so deeply offended to have heard such a thing. Really not my stance. <laughs> I'm doing my best to contribute to the site, um, be a good brand ambassador for it or whatever, but also um, I'm a scientist, so, you know, if somebody puts forward information, I'll question it, but... Um, at the same time, I'm not going to, like, let my mind be rigid against new information. 
So if you tell me it doesn't work, okay. I can certainly believe that. All right, we've pinned the pawn. Now, when people say something works or something doesn't work, that might mean different things to different people. So I keep that in mind in the back of my head, but um, for one person, if it doesn't work for that person, I can certainly believe that. Software is complex, you know? <laughs> Now, if you're telling me, like, in general, it never works, that's probably not the case. But if you're telling me that for you, it's not working the way you'd expect, certainly I can believe that. And the game continues for some reason. Okay. Is this really the game my opponent wants to be playing? because I'm up for playing it. They stopped moving, didn't they? Well, their time's going to expire before the tournament ends, and then I can report them. But it's been a fun game. Why do people cheat? I don't know. That's a good question. I'm not really sure. I mean, like... Sometimes there are tournaments where there are stakes, like monetary things, or I don't know. But when there's not money at stake, like, why would somebody bother? I'm not sure. They might think they're super clever and the first person to have thought of the idea. I've had friends who have done that against me. Um, they're still friends. Whatever. But it was terribly obvious when people were doing that. I like, could you just move already, a friend? Because I kind of know what you're doing. It's kind of obvious. <laughs> so if we could just conclude the game, that would be great. <laughs> but yeah, uh, I don't know why people do it. All right, good game. To their credit, my opponent moved um, with more than 30 seconds left. Maybe they were cooking something on the stove and their entire kitchen caught fire. I'll give them the benefit of the doubt. But they got really close there to really ticking me off, so... Oh well. Um, here, let's fix that. What does being a co-author of Stockfish mean? Um, no, so co-author would mean... Um, huh. So this is happening on the test site too, and maybe this is just a defect in my browser. So let's try this again. That's better. Not sure what to happened there. Could be my browser, could be the plugin. But yeah, congrats to Kimenko Sergey for winning. Um, yeah, let's go back and play some more Blitz. Um, so have I written book moves? No, not for stockfish. Not for anything that ever stood the test of time. Um, no, I maintain a fork of stockfish that plays all the variants that are played on the site. So when Grandmaster Sierra One is playing against um, stockfish in Crazy House, he's playing against the engine that uh, Fabian Fichter and I uh, co-authored. Let me see queen d4. Oh, that's not queen d4. Um, so against queen d4, the book moves f4. Against this, is the book move still f4? Hmm. I think so. This seems right. 
Um, any plans of forking Leela? So myself, no. Um, somebody has already done so for Crazy House. Um, they've created a neural network based engine, uh, Crazy ARA. I apologize that I forget the author's name. Um, quite embarrassed about that. Um, but no, this has been done for Crazy House. For other variants, that could be a fun project, but it also seems like it could be very, a lot of work and a lot of computation effort to produce all the weights that are needed to actually run the program. And uh, given that I don't have a 64 CPU machine that I want to leave running 24 seven, I might leave that work for some other enthusiast. Um, okay. This will exchange queens. I'll take here. Do I try to keep the pawn? Hmm. Do I go into opposite color bishop endgame? Well, I'm going to if I try to keep the pawn. I guess that's the decision. Uh, let's just go after this one. Just continue development and forget the e-pawn. Um, so what's of greater interest to me would be maybe uh, forking Rustfish or some other, I don't know, easier to maintain over time sort of thing. Um, all right. Given my opponent the knight pair, that should make things interesting. Also, I'm up a pawn. Okay, well, castle. Uh, and now I'm out of ideas. Bishops need diagonals on, upon which to operate. Um, that doesn't seem terrible. Not sure where this bishop's going to go. Um, oh, c2. c2 is the target. Um, my opponent has sacrificed a piece. It's more fun for me than it is for him, so we'll take it. Um, The only thing I want to prevent here is my opponent doubling rooks on my second rank. As long as I can prevent that, I can surely stir up some counterplay. Yeah, like I said. Let's see. No, well... That's an interesting question. Am I playing an engine right now? My bet would be no, um, but I'm not sure. Okay, so I've let my opponent double rooks on the second rank, but only because I can defend h2. And everything's still okay. So, yeah, that's where we're at. For some reason, my opponent persists. Well, I mean, there's... He can only lose the game. He can't, like, doubly lose it. I can't contra him. <laughs> can't, like, double or nothing bet him here. Although, if I could, I would. That'd be a really cool feature. Um, 
but since um, so we're just gonna push the ape on see what his idea is because I have a plan and at least the plan goes five moves deep here well now it goes four moves deep um, yeah rustfish um, I think it was Ronald Deman. I'm hoping I'm pronouncing his name correctly, but he was the author of the Zizigi bases, the table bases used by Stockfish. And he elected to port Stockfish to Rust, so um, Stockfish would, um, I don't know, it could help him provide compile time guarantees about the runtime behavior of Stockfish. Boop. Rook a8. Are we going to see rook a8? Or is my opponent going to like concede before uh, having to play such a groveling move? Boop. Alright, I guess he's not conceding. So... Um, falls to me to actually find a plan that goes deeper. Now, I am just effectively up a rook if I want to completely ignore that corner. I think I might. So. Just pretend that these pieces in the corner don't exist and we're just playing a normal chess game. Just up a rook. It's a handy little trick. Okay, let's keep this locked down. Your move, sir. But yeah, I'm gonna wager this guy isn't a engine. Oh, we got a rematch offer. He is a good player, but not at the same level as um, top level Stockfish or top level Ribka or such. So my guess is probably not. He does play a good game. Hmm. All right, let's take the center. The real point is I'd like to play c6 to deny his knight and bishop this d5 square and possibly even engineer my own d5 break. Um, so that's the plan. We're going to stick to it. And if I'm planning to play d5, gosh, wouldn't it be nice if I could follow it up with some other sort of break? So, uh, we're protecting the e-pawn in case we choose to advance that as well. Now, do I take on c4? If I take c4, we get some fun-looking exchanges, but I'm not sure I'm a fan of the resulting position. Let's get my rook out of the corner. Um, and yeah, I think my knight has a good home on f4, or a good outpost, rather. And the idea would be if I could put my queen on g5 and my knight on f4, then this knight couldn't move to e4. Otherwise, we're going to have a little bit more of a struggle here. Um, because I was just a little bit slow. If he plays g3, I might have this fun move. If he doesn't play g3, I might still have the fun move. Um, oh. Okay, so what I was saying earlier about queen g5 is still true. Like, he can't move the knight if I play queen g5. Um... Oh, I would like to develop this bishop. Man, this position's fun. Here's an idea. That's a fork. I th 
probably seen that in Larry Evans' book uh, about opening moves called What's the Best Move? Or if I haven't seen that in that book, I don't know. It feels like some sort of thing you'd see either in that book or some other opening authority book. Um, so let's just put the bishop on the diagonal. I don't have to play b6 to get it there. Um, let's have some fun. Let's continue having some fun. <laughs> All right. So we've got three pieces targeting the g-pawn. Can I get more pieces targeting that? So my other plan was to play h5, h4, if he kept this knight here. So, let's do it. What's the worst that could happen? I think he's got to play, like, queen d2 or something. If he plays rook f2, and I push and he moves the knight, like, knight e4, I take, and then I fork the king and the rook. So, I think he's got to do queen d... Oh, queen d2 drops the queen. Uh, yeah, no, I'm sorry. He's out of tactics. This is actually a really good game on my part. What's my opinion on the Zig language? Um, I do not know. Sorry. I, the only Zig related things I know are one, the zero wing reference. Um, and two, uh, Ziggy, the X board chess, uh, what would it be called? Something, an intermediary that would spit out quotes from time to time to opponents, uh, little pithy things that are kind of fun to say, but also would be the communication protocol between Windboard, uh, its engine, and uh, a human opponent playing on the other end of ICC or FIX. All right, this seems fun. So it's a pity that knight d5 is not made. That's such a pity. Can I take on e4? Um, I'm trying to visualize like what's happening next here. That knight is such a thorn in my side. Let's get rid of it and then calculate. I feel like I've missed some awesome combination here. What? That's adventurous. Okay. I'll take my chances. I probably shouldn't be doing such ridiculous moves here, but it seems prosaic in some way. Um, I've stopped calculating. This is too fun. I couldn't pass up this. I sure tried, but I couldn't.
That was exciting as heck. Wow. Oh, I get to move first this time. Sorry. <laughs> okay. Let's do it. <laughs> Nobody suspects uh, that move order. Okay, now I am confused. We're playing a whatever the heck this opening is. Um, sure. Seems sound. There's the target. Okay. Uh, this is strange. There's the target. Now, I could win the pawn back, but where's the fun in that? Next turn. Next turn is where the fun is. Although, I could continue just building up attackers on that. Um, because that was the original plan was just massively attack this e pawn, which is defenseless. And. Acknowledge that I have a better pawn structure. That was the plan. That is the plan. I guess I have invited knight to f2. Didn't really think much about that. Probably should have thought more about it. But I have fewer pawn islands, so... I don't know. This was not my greatest opening. Hmm. I'm really not liking this much anymore. Hmm. All these things are problematic in some way. So we'll plug the half open file and attempt to find a good square for the knight. Uh, yes, I will trade. Oh my goodness, yes, I will trade. Thank you. Holy moly. That went from very bad to very good. And an... I'm astounded how quickly that changed. Um... Hmm. Yeah, this is the right way to do it. Um, I'm so confused. I am less confused. Would you care to trade? Okay. I can live with this. <laughs> oh, I can live with this. Okay. That's cool. You're going to chase the other one now? Okay. That's cool. All right. Fine. We'll stop playing. <laughs> stop playing with our food. All right. Whatever. Um, this is a Sicilian. We haven't done that in a while. The board is 3D. But the board does not have a perspective applied. Correct. So my opponent has played the whatever the heck this is called variation of the Sicilian. Because I guess they're afraid that I might not, I might actually know some Sicilian theory. And while I might know some, they probably know more than I do. I don't really know the Sicilian. Which is why when we find an opponent who's kind enough to gift us a few games... Um, we see, can we learn maybe something about the opening from them? But no such luck today. All right, so, oh, well, maybe I'm going to learn something here. My opponent did successfully play d3. 
I didn't think they were going to get to play that. She had more board and piece styles with less contrast. Yeah, um, I have opinions. <laughs> Because, yeah, a lot of the boards and piece, or at least a lot of the boards, are very high contrast. And I find that super distracting. Um, so that's my opinion. Um, do I have opinions about the pieces? I'm not sure. Like, I went through all the combinations of 3D boards and 3D pieces and picked this one because... It seemed the most usable to me. Um, I was most able to differentiate what the pieces were on this board as opposed to other boards. And they really stood out from the board. So you could see where the pieces were and where the board is. Um, I had challenges um, recognizing the pieces on other boards. So, because my opponent has knight takes b5, I have to start with this. Oh, they still have knight takes b5. This doesn't stop knight takes b5 at all. Uh-oh. Um, hmm. That's interesting. Um, okay, that happened. So I made a dubious sacrifice. My opponent countered with a dubious sacrifice. And I don't know where we are. Um, huh. Well, that was exciting. Um, I have to take it. The alternatives to capturing that do not work. And are not even remotely close to working. Um, now I have to try to hold on to the e6 pawn at least long enough to get some of my other pieces developed. Um, okay. Wait, no. This. Well, I can get my pawn back. I think that's the best deal I'm going to get here. So we exchange here, I double their pawns, and then I win the A pawn. I'm not going to get a better deal than that out of that middle game position I got myself into. Oh! Never mind, I don't get the material. Um... I get initiative instead. Okay. We'll make do with that. Make the best of it. So we've got this nice little pin here. Um, I could take on c3, but this is a really nice pin to have. So I'd prefer to do anything other than taking. Uh, let's get my rook active. Now, can I take on a4, rook e8? Yes, the rook can't check me twice on e8 and then e7. So this capture is safe. Let's pin the bishop. Um, this looks fine. So we've got a pin on the first rank, which cannot be broken. I guess my opponent could play a3 to try to force my hand. I'm not sure what else my opponent could play here. They could try to harass my c-pawn. Okay, yeah. Like I was thinking. Now I could take on a3. Um, because this is pinned. Oh. Oops. <laughs> oh, I accidentally trapped the bishop um this was more powerful a play than i thought it was um 
Okay, so yeah, a3 just hangs the pawn. Because this bishop's got nowhere to go. We got another rematch offer. Well, it makes for an amused audience, we will say that. Ooh, 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 I get to play this. Oh, I wanted to play d4. I slipped on that. Well, uh, how do I play this opening? I never play this, so I don't really know. Um, let's try to not entomb this bishop. We'll grab the bishop pair. So I've created some sort of tension in the pawn structure um, with the aim of making use of this hole later on, uh, eventually pushing c5. Um, oh, right, so he's going to play c5 sooner rather than later, so I'll force him to take with the e-pawn. Yeah, this was not my finest opening play. Um, do I castle queenside? That seems suicidal, but kingside also seems pretty bad. Kingside is safer. It only looks unsafe. So this looks spooky until you realize the only target is G2. And the only two pieces are attacking are the queen and the knight. So, otherwise this would be really scary, but it's just not as scary as it looks. And so now I've opened the center, put my bishop on a nice long diagonal. And while this is an uphill battle, it could be worse. Um... Put the rook on the open file. Do I play e5? e5 has some merit here. Whatever, let's do it. Looks fun. Crystallography clerk. Yeah. The pawn is the soul of chess. So I guess like a crystal, in some way it does have some beauty property. Um, yeah, okay, we'll take it. Sure. I'm guessing that's not the move they intended, or... I don't know. It's hard to guess. Let's see, are we going to get another one? We get another bishop b5. So this time... Here, I'm actually going to take toward the center. Because last time didn't go so well. Right. Um, so... How does this go again? I'm pretty sure there is a line. Um, I 
I'm not sure if I played this right. I'll have to look it up sometime. Does it, well, I would ask, but we're still in the middle of the game. Somebody surely knows how to play this, but not I. Alright, so we've activated the queen. Uh, could just play e5. e5 doesn't look terrible. But my real goal is just castle and get out of this in one piece. Um... E5 does not really further that goal. So if he had some really cool uh, check or something here, I'd be scared. But there is no check. Um, so as long as I don't fall for any cheapos, I have escaped the opening in one piece. Um, debating where the knight goes. This is the only place that doesn't like make some big concessions, so we're going here. Upon getting hit, we go back this way. And while this is not beautiful, it, it's functional. Um, strange. I thought rooks belonged on open files. You just moved it from one open file to another open file. I don't get it. What's the point? Okay. Um... Sure, I'm cramped, so of course I will exchange. Um, here, let's put my bishops behind the pawns. The rook on the open file. Defend my rook. Yes, this does drop the a pawn, but I get the c pawn in exchange for it. Or if my opponent does not pursue that immediately, then do I play a6? I want to play a5. I don't think I can afford to play a5. Uh, so I play a6. Okay. That bishop's super annoying, so let's exchange bishops. We'll take the d6 square. Um, no sense delaying it. Let's exchange rooks. C5 did not happen, much to my surprise. So my opponent can play knight d5? Because they can't do that. If they were to play knight d5 immediately, that drops a pawn. And if they don't play it immediately, then my king protects the d5 square. Uh, on the other hand, they had knight e4, which just wins a pawn on the spot. So, not well played on my part. Um... Hmm. Alright. I've got to play this. I want to play that. I want pawns on dark squares. So I'll just try to put pawns on dark squares. Alright, so protect the d5 square. Um. Interesting. Suppose I have to take it one way or the other. If 
If my opponent captures, my king gets the center. If my opponent does not capture, although my king doesn't get the center, I get other fun stuff. And I'm debating, do I switch my bishop's diagonal? Well, that decision becomes a lot easier when my opponent's giving up the diagonal. Or giving up d5, rather. Oh. Well, they should have just taken e5, because... I gave up a pawn for free there. Um, I was not paying enough attention. I need to pay better attention. Are we going to see knight a7? I would be so amused to see knight a7 here. Alright, there's knight a7. Um, and all its dubious honor um, so we've enclosed the knight or encased it the knight cannot move without being captured knight still cannot move without being captured Still, the knight is trapped, although um, my capturing it would be a blunder here, so we'll just allow it to escape as if we had a choice. They check me. Potzer sees a check, Potzer gives a check. There's the check. That's... I did not expect that. I was going to condemn it, but to condemn it I'd have to know that he had a better move. And I'm not sure that he did. So, uh, no sense condemning it. Okay, we're luring my opponent's king far, far away from my c-pawn. And it can't make it back in time. Alright, can I play... Alright, we didn't get to play the Gioco Piano this time. Oh, because I accidentally played the Pianissimo that one time. Oh well. So, um, I need to find some other fun white openings. Bishop f5. It's not a move I've seen before. What's going on here? This looks fun. I'm not sure if this is sound. It almost certainly is not, but... Boy, um, I was thinking Rook E1. I'm still thinking Rook E1. We're up a pawn. We can give a knight for two pawns and see where we end up. Now, where does my bishop go here? I have many possibilities. Um... This looks fun. This does not win material. Okay. Yeah, this simple move actually looks quite reasonable here. Um.
so I'm winning in exchange at least. Although I'm not sure I want the rook. Oh, a piece though. Yeah, that's a no-brainer. We're taking a piece. Uh, I could have done better, probably. Um, it just feels like when I'm winning a piece like that in the opening, that both of us must have played some mistake for something that catastrophic to have occurred. And I'm not sure what my mistake was, but I did have an uncomfortable moment in that opening. Um, interesting. Yeah, we have another uncomfortable moment here. Not sure what's going on. We're up a piece. That much I know. But the rest seems pretty unclear. What? Offering a bishop exchange. And that is quite generous, but I'm tempted to do this first. Um, knight b5, queen b8 hitting my bishop, knight takes, bishop takes, yeah, it looks not so bright, um, let's do this, uh, I found another way to do this, so this hits the rook, although he's got knight back, so maybe that's not so bright either, I'm just trying to trade pieces, damn it. <laughs> Can't I just have a nice peace trade in peace? There we go. Now my bishop's active, my knight's active, my queen's active. All right. Here, take my knight. Oops, well, I stopped paying attention. In case that wasn't abundantly clear, I stopped paying attention. That's what happens when I stop paying attention. <laughs> okay, well, hmm. This is a fun new exercise. <laughs> I bet my opponent will be quite excited by this latest development. Um, not a whole lot I can do here. But we finally have a challenging opening. So let's try to enjoy that. To make something happen here? The answer is no, but let's pretend. Let's pretend I can make something occur. Then maybe something might occur. Okay. Oh, my bishop's attacked. Did I say I stopped paying attention? Not sure if I said that. Yeah, this is not so hot. Well, this does nothing to stop it. All right, we'll concede that. Congratulations, you got your rating points back. You want another rematch. Okay, we'll have a rematch. <sighs> Come on. Really? Really? You know, I bet I'll find a way to doze off in this one, too. Okay, so the threat is to checkmate on f7. Hmm. If only there were a way I could defend against a mate threat. If only, like, there were this concept of, like, defense in chess that had been practiced over many tactical exercises. Ah, if only there were a way to somehow not lose a chess game the minute your opponent tries to attack you. You know, I bet in the 19th century, 
Uh, folks are pretty surprised to see people defending successfully against attacks. That must have been a really shocking experience the first few times it happened. Because, like, up to that point, whenever somebody sacrificed your a piece, you were bound by honor and duty and glory and such. You had to take the sacrifice. And most of the time, you'd end up losing the game after having unwisely uh, captured everything that your opponent offered. Then I guess Philidor brought some sort of science to the game. Um, this like theory about pawn structures. All right, fine. If I've got to go this way to defend my stuff, I'll go this way. It's inconvenient. I was gonna do knight c8, but ah, uh, so. Um, we'll go this way then. The only reason I... Oh, really? Okay. Yeah, no, I can I can live with that. Which way do I take this? Well, first, get that damn queen so it's not hitting my pawn. And then we take it. Unless we got some tactical resource, but no. All right. That's nice. So I'm not losing my C pawn here. Yeah, these 3D pieces are so trippy. Along with all the really cool lighting. The 2.5D, 3D, 2D perspective thing is pretty trippy at first. Eventually, you get kind of used to it. I found that, at least to me, it seems more comfortable. So that's why I'm sticking with it. Um, yeah, so my bishop covers the dark squares, my pawns cover the light squares. There's no surprises here. Unless, like, somehow I can trade queens by sacking my queen on g2. That might be a surprise. But there's probably no surprises here. Can we get the queen to move? I really don't want that knight landing on e4. So if there's a way I can stop knight e4, that'd be great. Um, I can't stop it. I could try, but there's no stopping it. So the next be best thing is to try to make knight e4 not as destructive. So if I can trade some pieces off, Knight e4 doesn't ruin my day. All right, and so now that the pieces have been reduced, um, just go back with the bishop, and suddenly I'm not under heavy fire. So that works. Yeah, there's no reason to panic here. I'm being abundantly cautious, having blundered a previous game away, trying to, like, show some degree of caution this game. Um, yeah, okay, we'll take it. And we'll put the bishop back. And having plugged all the holes, hopefully my opponent can see fit to concede. But uh, no, they spotted a free pawn. All right, fine. Take your bloody pawn. Or not. I thought you wanted the pawn. Do you not want it? How badly do you want it? Can I get the queens traded so I don't accidentally blow this game? That's the question. 
Uh, question number two is, can I stir up some sort of attack a different way here? It's not surprising my opponent plays that. Um, fine. Whatever. We'll defend things this way if we must. Um, no threats here whatsoever other than the mate threat, which is not actually mate, but, you know, let's pretend. There we go. Finally won it. Yeah, the board is flat. Um... Almost got confused there into th oh, free pawn. We will take a free pawn. We so will take the free pawn. That was not a hard decision. What is a hard decision is what to do after taking the pawn. But, um,. So, we'll just put the pieces on good squares. If we can get the bishop, then, yep, already we've made really good progress. We've smashed his pawn structure and put our bishop on the long diagonal. Connect all our pieces. Um, that's not a threat. It actually is a threat. Because I can't capture a knight if it were a knight were to move to h4. So that was reckless on my part. Um, do I have anything here? I hope so. Um, no, I've just blown a piece. That's cool. So my opponent's two points to the good. We'll take stock of that and reevaluate what's going on. And just defend the inferior endgame. Yep. So if you're curious like why I don't find this opponent that interesting, it's because they play openings that should lose them the game. Um and beyond that, it's pretty obvious that they aren't trying. So that's where it gets frustrating, playing an opponent, when you know they're not trying, and sometimes they win anyway. Um, which can happen. All right, so. Still continue trying to make the best of the situation, but... It's not looking good. All right, so if I do anything other than this, I'm in knight g2 ruins my day, I think. It's king e1, or is it knight f3 that ruins my day? I'm not sure. It looks pretty awful. This looks like there might theoretically be a perpetual or something somehow. Um, right, so this was my big idea. So we're gonna allow his big idea and then say we're not afraid. Um, and should we be? I don't know, maybe. Probably. So if he had a good place to... Oh, I'm sorry. This knight move uh, is mate. Um, that's somewhat inconvenient. Um, 
Yeah, my king cannot move. I thought I had various moves to rebut that, but I have nothing here. So, congratulations. Alright, let's play something less exciting. Even trying to play something less exciting, he forces me to like go into tactical waters. The forces is kind of the wrong word to describe this, but man, just give me a golden ticket every day. This is beyond anything Black ever could have hoped for out of that opening. Already Black is better. I'm not trying to like exploit my opponent out of the opening, but they keep setting up traps and falling into them. I just don't get it. Like, why would you give me all this? So I have a choice. Do I take the bishop? Or do I put my knight on an active square on the other side of the board? I think I want the bishop. So now I'm almost threatening to win the e-pawn. This helps me activate my bishop with tempo. I mean, okay, yes, my king is a bit drafty. But that's nothing new. We've got the so we've got the bishop on a wide open board. If knight b5, I guess I just do king d8 or something. But they're not going to challenge me on that front either. Uh, do I try to stop knight b5 or rook e1 or all that? I don't know. Yeah, let's try to stop it. So, I might be down a tempo here. If they give me one more tempo, I'm probably doing really well here. He's trying to make things complex. Uh, I guess he's trying to find a tactical solution to an opening that should have no tactical resources. So, um, maybe that's what he's up to. Some people love their tactics, and if there's an opening that does, doesn't have a tactic, they'll try to make it complicated anyway. But that was just outrageous. Um, so this knight's well-placed. Let's see if we can exchange for it. So I'm winning the C-pawn. They defend against the one-move threat. Um, and I don't know. We'll keep the knight out of B5. I'm not sure what to do here. Bishop e4 really feels correct here. Um, they do have a tactical... No, they don't. Um, yeah, bishop e4 is not right. I need to play uh, rook f7. That move was not necessary.
keep the pawns together even though they're on light squares and I don't like the fact that they're on light squares but they do function um, this position would have more tactical opportunities in my favor if the pawns were on the other color complex however uh, we have to play with the cards were dealt and if the cards were dealt say the pawns end up on light squares well that's where they go Um, I imagined a ghost for a second there. A phantom that somehow this pawn was going to go back to f3. It's not. There's no reason for me to be afraid of that. Oh, the knight could have gone back. And then I have to play d5 and have a pawn uh, in a most inopportune location. Um, this is disgusting. Oh, the uh, king has taken the square from the knight. They could play knight e3. Knight e3 does get tactical. If they don't play knight e3, it's cowardly. Um, that's not to say knight e3 is correct, but if you're wanting to play an aggressive game, knight e3 is the way to do it. That said, I wasn't too afraid of this. Okay, we'll get my king out of these tactics soon. Oh, I'm sorry. I have bishop f5 to refute any of these tactics so my rook doesn't hang. It's like if he plays knight f5, I can take with the bishop. So that cheapo really isn't there. Alright, so we'll exchange here. the king out of peril. Don't walk into knight b4. Fork. Push this. Push this. Alright, pushing's ineffective at this point. Um, pursue activity elsewhere. Expected him to take this. Still expecting a capture. Although, with the rook back there, it's not going to be so effective. Alright. Alright, so we've protected everything. Um, allow for a check. I played some stupid moves. That was not good. Sorry about the noise there. Got a bit of a party next door, but that's okay. I am playing poorly, but I think I can correct that. 
Um, crap. So we've trapped our opponent's king. And there is no trebuchet here because I'm on the correct side of the pawn. So the question is, does my opponent know the opposition? They probably do. So just let it play out. They don't. Of course not. Why would they study endgames? I don't know. Well, I can think of one reason why they'd study. See if you can think of one. Can you think of one? I know I can. Alright. Fine. We'll play this endgame. This is a fun one. Yeah, not losing king and pawn end games could be important uh, for your development as a chess player. Because they do tend to occur in close games. Believe it or not, close games do tend to reach end games. It's just how it works. <laughs> um, this is sketchy, but my opponent's not calculating, so I can get away with it. Like I said, super sketchy idea, but if my opponent's not going to calculate it, I could play anything. <laughs> well, that's a interesting move. Not really sure what a5 achieves. Oh no, I have the same number of pawn islands. I'm sorry, I have more pawn islands than he does. I can't count, but that doesn't matter, because I'm calculating and he's not, so. Your turn. Hmm. was fun. Our game is still continuing somehow. I guess it goes until I checkmate him, right? So let's make that happen. Check. Alright. I don't even know anymore. Like, should I be calculating? Is that a thing I should still be doing? I think the answer is yes. Really, I, I should be calculating. I'm being a lazy bum and not doing it. Um... This position isn't too bad, though. Oh, I had a check. I still have the check. There it is. There's a check. 
Yeah, I win. Go me. All right. Let's continue playing this, because it seems to tick him off a bit. I'll just play a nice Pierce. You know, nothing special. All right. I mean, if he's going to double down and saying, oh, I've got to get my bishop to h6, then okay, fine. Maybe we just let him get the bishop there? I don't know. Okay, I guess I should have calculated this. I should have, I didn't, and it didn't even matter. That's pretty great. I could play anything against this guy. It wouldn't... Oh, that's not true. I could play a lot of things against him. Not anything, but quite a few things I could get away with. Sure, I don't care. Okay. That's a move. I should have expected that. Hmm. I certainly should have expected that. And while I thought this might be okay, uh, he didn't have to hang this. He could have played like g3 and then g4. And if I took on Passant, he could have just recaptured and then played g4 anyway. He was not obligated to hang this pawn. Um, but he did. So... Okay. Looks like I might castle queenside after all. That's cool. We're up a pawn, we got the bishop pair, and our opponent has no idea what's going on and is starting to calculate. Alright, let's put our queen on a good square. Um, truth be told, I'm not sure where I should castle. I know that I should. Okay, so he castles long, I'm going to castle long. If he'd castled short, I probably would have castled short. I'm not sure. Okay. Um, well, if I'm going to make any progress, I've got to get these pawns moving. So let's get them pawns moving. Oh, that hangs a pawn. Let's not push that one. Put the rook on the half-open file behind my pawn. Normally you'd want to put it on a half-open file um, where the file is vacant with respect to your rook. However, I happen to have pawns on every one of my files because I haven't hung anything. So, um, well, sure, I guess that's changing. Um, we did hang a pawn, but... Um, yeah, normally you'd want to put the rook so it's not blockaded by your pawn. Just pro tip there. Also, this is a fun little tactic. I've done this in several blitz games, or I've done it in a game 60 once. Some very unusual game 60 position. Um, where... Nobody would have expected that this king and queen were lined up and nothing can interpose between them. 
I have once gotten away with that, and it was hilarious, but, um, and I did not convey any sign of, like, emotion or surprise or whatever uh, anxiety leading up to that to my opponent, which perhaps made it all the more effective. Um, but, yeah, that's a really fun cheapo if your opponent castle queenside and gets a little too active with their queen. Yeah, King B1 tends to work. Okay, this rematch button instantly flares up. The instant the game is concluded, my opponent wants a rematch. Okay. Let's play the same thing with the white pieces. Let's see what it takes to get my opponent to stop rematching. <laughs> or start playing good moves. I have faith in my opponent that they can find a good move, maybe. Or even if they can't, at least I might be able to learn an opening. Uh, so if playing a Pierce reversed, um, I'm a bit baffled how this is proceeding. Uh, can I take on e5? Because that feels really thematic here. I can't. Right? What can I do? Other than say, hooray, I've activated all my pieces. Feels like there should be something more I can do. Do I plunk my knight onto c4? Um... I'm just so confused. There has to be a decent move here. And I'm not liking knight b5. Because it just invites his bishop to go to a better square. I'm not liking knight e4. Because knight takes pawn takes. Or knight takes queen takes. I've only helped him develop. Um, I guess this is the thematic move. Oh wait. Have I accidentally played a dragon transposition? If so, that's pretty metal. Uh, okay. We've transposed into a dragon, and I don't know it, and neither does my opponent. Great. Um... Hmm. Okay, I've done that before. It never ended well, but maybe my opponent can show me a thing or two. All right. And now am I supposed to take the knight? How's this go? feel like this feels thematic-ish. My knight never made it to c5 because my opponent like completely blockaded the c5 square. It's so good on him for that, but um, I'm not so sure this worked out for them after all. I mean, one way to a stop losing 10 games in a row is to not play 10 games in a row. Um, just one idea. So my bishop's not so great here. It could be a lot better than it is. Oh, I know. Let's trade this. And then I trade this, and then put the bishop on b2. And we win a pawn. Game, set, and match. 
Because that knight's not making its way to b5 anytime soon. Um... And even if it were, uh, surely there would be something I could do to make it worth my while. So I've stopped pawn to b5. Um, okay, we'll open the position. Rather than winning a pawn, uh, we'll proceed this way. perhaps most unwise on my part. Um, okay, we'll stop h5. I'm not sure if I completely stopped f5, but I have no time to calculate. Um, damn, this is gonna get sharp. I have to hang my a pawn to do this, and this might not even work. But if I'm playing to win this, we're gonna go all in. So I'm afraid of knight f5. That's why I allow this to happen instead. Uh, get my king up here. Yeah, this is not good. <laughs> I think my opponent wins this by a landslide. Yeah, this is not working. All right, so he won a game. So I guess that demonstrates that I really don't know that opening as well as I should. I did watch my time. Yes, uh, certainly the time was watched. All right, so there's something black can do here. I still don't remember what it is. Um... But there's definitely a thing here somewhere. Is it knight h5? Could it be? That doesn't seem so bad. Maybe I have to actually play D takes instead of B takes. I'm not sure. Uh, 96 looks scary, but it's okay. Ninety six is fine. There we go. We have survived the opening. But yeah, I'm starting to think that B pawn takes is not so good. 
So even from this sort of opponent, I can still learn things. I still need to look it up, though. Maybe there is something. Maybe there is a way to tactically justify what I was trying to do. Um... No. This looks okay. So now I'm actually supporting um, pawn d5 and then pawn e5. Alright. Not sure what my opponent's doing. I'll just play pawn d5. Looks okay. I've got f4 under my control, so expanding my control of other squares is probably in my best interest. So I could finally get this damn bishop out. It's so tempting to sacrifice pieces, but none of the sacks look any good. Um, right, let's put this on a nice active square. <laughs> Accidentally invited knight g5, but I think I survive it, so we'll see. Hopefully I'm right. It'd be a pity if I were wrong there. Um... I'll keep my king off of this diagonal. Oh, wow. Really? Is that your move? Didn't expect that either. Um, okay, sure. We'll trade. This seems like a good way to activate more pieces. Bishop out. Whatever. I wasn't paying attention. Okay. Still wasn't paying attention. But I'm only down a pawn. So that's not too bad. Could be a lot worse. The bishop's a lot more fun to play than the knight here, but uh, my opponent does have the better of this. So I need to play actively or I will lose. Um, and now my opponent gets to play a technical endgame, which we all know Opponents love playing technical endgames. Put the pawns on the dark squares. Continue putting the pawns on the dark squares. Um, continue continuing putting pawns on dark squares. All right. Um, yeah, there's other places this bishop could go, but this seems most appropriate. Also possible was rook e8, but it seems sketchy. Um, try to trade some pawns. Because we're on the defending side, so if we can trade off all the pawns, we will survive this. Uh, if we cannot, we will not survive this. Alright, that's on a dark square. Um, that's on a dark square. That was not bright. I just welcomed a, a fork of forks. This could turn out badly. 
um, could turn out well. If my opponent, again, doesn't calculate right. Oh, okay, I don't want to pin the bishop. That'd be bad. Rooks are fun to keep on the board, but I've got to play the cards we're dealt. And if those cards say we have to go into this dumb endgame, then we got to go into this dumb endgame. That's just how it goes. All right, so as long as I don't lose my bishop, I'm doing okay. My bishop goes on my opponent's side of the board, so we got that taken care of. Actually goes on the long diagonal, protecting against advancement of the pawn. Could go on the other long diagonal doesn't matter too much. Um, just kidding. <laughs> Sorry to scare you all there. All right. Segmented the board. Is my opponent going to try to win this? Because that could be amusing. I don't favor my opponent's chances of winning this. Let's put it that way. Oh, he can't actually cover all these squares at the same time. All right. Yeah, knowing your end games helps because then you can transpose into a variety of different end games depending on what the circumstance calls for. Well, I guess we might end up playing a real Scandi after all if he plays d5. If he doesn't play d5, I don't know what we get, but. Oh, all right. I guess he had to go. That's cool. Whew. That was something. That was exhausting. That's what that was. This is why I play tournaments, by the way, is because that situation where I get playing one opponent and they just keep hitting the rematch button and neither of us learns too much from it. It's not the most enjoyable experience, so that's generally why I go for playing tournaments instead of playing uh, in the lobby. Um, so maybe I should play a tournament next. I'm starting to get hungry, but um, I can struggle my way through it. On the other hand, I see that we do have several good uh, chess streamers also going at the same time, so... Perhaps it would be most prudent if I just uh, handed over the torch to one of them. Um, so let me go get the list of who's going. Uh, I know one of the local coaches in the area um, is streaming because I just saw it a second ago on, um, on the homepage. I unfortunately have only seen his name in writing, and I've seen him play both on this server and what was the U.S. Chess Live server. Uh, so if I can find what's his Twitch handle, then I would be able to host him. It's possible he might have gone offline in the last minute. Um, Okay, so this is the target. Protect against that. Now let's see where. Okay. Um, 
continue protecting against the knight here. And where is he in this list? I just don't see him there. Huh, that's weird. Okay, let's overprotect the e pawn because momentarily it will be hanging. Um, I did not expect that, although it makes sense because he wants to play f4 in the same vein that I wish to play f5. So I should have foreseen that, but it doesn't seem. I want to claim that my f5 idea was brighter than his f4 idea and it's not just a matter of pride it's there's actually i think some merit to this that now even if he plays f4 i can still push e5 and i've still successfully blockaded his bishop um so that's my point is that i'm holding off my opponent's aggression and once it's completely been held off, then I can start transitioning into attacking. But right now I'm just trying to restrain my opponent. I think I'm doing a good job at it. Um, yeah, let's protect the king side. Um, it's a wasted move. I mean, I guess maybe my opponent intends bishop h3, working around the fact that I've completely blockaded the center, perhaps. I'm not sure. Um, I'll just double on the f-file. Trying to make him sweat a bit. Um, So I'm trying to build up to playing b5 and have b5 be an effective move. It's going to take many moves for me to build up to that without hanging something. Um, actually, b5 is not necessary. Uh, knight takes, pawn takes, bishop c5 doesn't work here. Once I played this, they could play bishop c5 straight away. Um... Maybe I have to play rook back to d8 now. I'm not sure. I do not know. Yeah, I think I have to protect this again. Can I play this now? Yeah, where does this bishop go? Okay, goes back. And suddenly we both have doubled pawns. This knight is not so clever. Um, I think I'm still okay. I'm playing with fire, but the center is blockaded for now, so this might be okay. Um, I'm still playing with fire because my knight's hanging. Um, Playing with fire is fun. Not recommended, but you know, you can get some really interesting games. And you can also get burned. Whatever. I don't care. Rook d5. Let's see it. Sorry, is pawn b4 also? 
Um, okay, we'll step out of some of the tactics and probably into others. This game got really interesting. Hmm. Okay, so my goal is queen c2, rook f2, and then like threaten stuff on h2. Um, my other goal is just win the piece to simple tactic. Um, and this is my bailout variation in case stuff goes south. I can still perpetual my way out of this, but I think I'm okay. I'm not sure. Oh, I'm up a piece still. Nice. We'll take it. I almost mouse slipped queen e6. That could have been bad. Wow. Um, well, that's one way to go. Oh, that's cool. Like, if they lose by timeout and they've sat... Like the, I don't know, they must have lost their connection or something. Um, but wow, that was an adventure. And it can only go downhill from here. We'll take a quick look at this. But otherwise, that's going to be it. Um, so I'm not sure what happened there. So the guy I was hoping to uh, host here was... I cannot pronounce his name for the life of me. It's a Greek name. Petros or Petros uh, Karagenis, I think, is a local coach in the Midwest area. I know we've seen him bring his team of kids to uh, the U.S. Amateur Team North event. Uh, he seems like a really nice guy, just from what I've seen him online. And in order to be a coach, um, you have to be fairly personable, I would imagine. I can't say that for sure, but. Overall, he seems like a pretty cool guy. Um, okay, so it's about what I thought, that bishop c1 and things got muddied. Um, queen c5, I fully expect to get hit by rook d5. In fact, b4 forces me to retreat, and apparently my... Oh, I'm just dropping a knight. Um, oh, yeah, no, it's Stockfish is completely right there, so... The last point at which I had some semblance of a good position was here, and then I blew it by playing knight d6. Uh, I needed to stop knight g5, apparently. I needed to play one slow move for this position to work out. Um, so that's kind of interesting. Makes sense. I could have seen it, should have seen it, because this protects h3. Um, in fact, this is, yeah, my opponent had this the whole time. So queen d7 was no good. Here, knight d6 was appropriate because uh, I have g5 under my control. Once I've given up the g5 square, knight g5 is very strong in this particular configuration. Who knew? Anyhow, um, yeah, it's been a fun event. Go check out all these fantastic masters and such who are playing. Um, and yeah, thanks for watching. And we'll see you next time.